anyone who's been a Baselight user for a long time um, knows the Baselight timeline is powerful but can get very complicated and when you do a lot of grading you can have very very high stacks which is can be difficult to manage. Um, people have requested for a long time the ability to fold stacks away and stuff like this. So we've added that, we've also added tracks. So I've got a, first thing we'll do is we'll load our original grade, our original scene. So this is what it looks like currently. So if we, if we zoom all the way out, it looks like that. So it's, so it's quite complicated and, and when it looks like what a colorist would normally see, uh, in terms of typical zoom levels, it looks something like that. So it's quite complicated. So the first thing we've done is added the ability to, to fold stacks, basically. So for example, I'm gonna zoom, just zoom in a little bit. You'll see here now there are these little arrows, basically, um, which indicates that something is unfolded. So for example, if I have this sky replacement here, uh, indicating like sky dissolve, I can now just press my uh, folding button and it will fold that whole thing away. And I can do it on the entire shot. So I can fold everything away. So you can see how much simpler that whole shot looks like now. Like there's quite a lot going on there. There's this, starts with this, then it does some tracking, then it does uh, a primary, then it changes the grass color, then it sort of adds some contrast, then it does something else, then it adds some fog, then it starts modifying each of the various bits of the, of the wheels. At any point I can unfold any of these things. I can see what they're actually doing. What they're actually doing is using EXR references, so basically they're, 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 they're referencing mats encoded in the EXR file which are produced by the VFX guys to uh, isolate the bikes and stuff like this and you get the idea and then finally we have a sky replacement which is enormous so you have you know someone's Nikon, a sky from someone's Nikon or a VFX VFX moment, some grading, some transform to put it in the right spot, some grain uh, and then something to do the actual matting and then that's to dissolve so you get the idea. And this can be done uh, on the whole timeline. So if I, if I select everything, if I control select everything and just uh, do this, it will fold everything away and it all works fine. Uh, it will automatically unfold when you, for example, when you go to a shot, uh, if I select uh, a layer here and uh, add a shape or something, it will auto, oh, I already made, it's already present. So if I sort of unfold here, it will automatically have a key basically and find it. So you don't have to have everything folded up all the time. You can have it unfolded all the time. It'll basically, as you go through the timeline, it'll automatically fold uh, and unfold, okay? So, uh, and you can also select everything and unfold even more than that. So you can fold down to the, all the shots inside a single sequence of image data. So here it's folded these ones down because there's two bits of image data here. There is, there's a grain pass and there's the images, okay? So you can even, you can even get that even smaller, um, which is great for editorial people who are not interested in the grade. They actively don't want to see your grade. They don't want to have any risk of breaking your grade, which is, which is great. So that's the first thing. Um, but we decided, uh, given that how long you've all had to wait for this feature, we would go a bit further based on some stuff that we've sort of learnt from, from, from sort of big shows that we've been involved in and add tracks, okay? So here we have the same timeline. You could think of it as being trackified. So I've, I've chosen the categories arbitrarily, but you can think of a track here as a base light timeline on its own, but each within a track. So each track is capable of pulling data from the track above, much as you, much as you can here. So you can see here we have a conform track, which represents the cut. And then we have a grade track, so we'll just zoom out. We have a grade track. I have a track for sky replacements. I have a track for anything like atmospherics, like dust, lens flares, anything like this. We have an HDR track, which I added arbitrarily, which well, I'm gonna actually remove because I'm, I shouldn't have left that in there. We have transforms and we have grain. Now, any one of these things we can bypass. So I can, I can bypass the grade completely. I can bypass the sky replacements. You can see here, as we, as we have stuff with sky replacements, they, get, they disappear. We can just get rid of all the atmospherics. Like here there's various lens flares and stuff that disappear and appear. We can bypass the transforms, all the various little re-racks that were in the system, and we can bypass the grain, which you're probably not gonna be able to see 
from that distance. So the reason we did this is simply to, because we're finding on big jobs that a base light timeline is a much more collaborative thing. On something like a Captain Marvel or a Black Panther or something, there are loads of versions to be done. They're all done at the same time. Multiple people are working on them, and, but yet they have to all contribute to the same timeline. So with the complexity of these sort of stacks, trying to merge that together becomes quite painful. So allowing the ability to have tracks allows people to divide their work and separate it out. It also allows you to change how things are viewed. Uh, for example, I might be working on the transforms. I'm an editor working on the transforms. I'm not interested in seeing the grade. So you can basically go in here and say, squash it and you don't see the grade anymore. Or I don't, want to, I don't want to see the atmospherics either. I don't want to see the grain. All I'm interested, all the sky replacements. All I'm interested in is transforms, okay? And you can basically limit your work. All the stuff is still there. It's all still live. The client view is still working, as you can see. Um, but like, uh, it allows you to really sort of control what you're doing. At any point, you can see everything. You can sort of unsquash everything back again. Uh, in terms of how does it work when I've already got a tunnel, I've got tracks, and I want to, the client says, we need to do some, we need to do some HDR. Um, so where are we going to put it? Okay, we'll put it, we'll put it before the transforms, and we need to do a HDR pass. So what we can do is insert a new track, obviously. So I'm going to insert a new track below here. We don't have a new track. We'll re rename it, as you'd expect. But you know, obviously, Baselight users know that if I just have this implicitly selected and go P, it's going to put it there. And if, or if I select this one, it's going to put it there. How do I get stuff into this track when there's no strips there to, to tell it where to insert? And the answer is uh, we have a thing called, you basically click on this and it goes blue. That means it's now the insertion track. It means that any sequence insertion, any, any, any pastes you do are all funneled into that track. Okay? So for example, even though I've got a selection here, if I go P, then now my grade goes in there and I can do whatever sort of, sort of HDR style grading I want to do, whatever. So sort of muck around with the, uh, what I want to do. It also works for copy and paste. So if I want to go, if I just copy that, control C, can hold here. It doesn't really matter what I have selected in there. If I go control I, it will go in there. Same thing if I want to paste to everything, I can just go select all stack bottoms to the right. It's selected all this stuff, but since the inter insertion track is set, I can paste that and it will, in it will put it in there, if you sort of see what I mean. So that basically allows you to sort of lock the timeline down and say everything I want while I'm working on goes in here and you don't touch anything else. Uh, you can also uh, have situations like people, an obvious other question you have with this sort of stuff is how does normal copy and paste work? What do I do if I want to copy a grade to a shot? So if I, I'm just going to zoom this down a little bit, just have a bit more room. So if, we, if I have maybe uh, this shot here, and uh, I want to take its grade, I go copy. Uh, there's a setting uh, in, the, in the copy and paste settings which basically says whether you want to maintain tracks or not. If I turn that off and switch off the insertion track and I just select this shot here and go paste, everything goes in there, okay? Which is maybe what you want. It may well be that you have a specific bunch of grades you want to put it in this specific spot. But if that's not what you want and uh, you just want to make sure that if it was in a track before and you wanted to maintain that, you can say maintain tracks. And when I go into this shot and say maintain tracks, it will paste everything as it would be and maintain it. It doesn't have to be an entire track. I could just select a small section of this stuff, say, and say paste. And it'll only paste that stuff and it will maintain it. So you get the idea. That's why this feature will take a little bit longer because a lot of base having to be changed to be um, track aware and that's what we're currently engaged in working through. For example, you know, multi-paste. Only multi-paste from this track. You know, so for example, a common example would be something like you've got two people, someone is using a Mystica or something to do some stereo grading, they get an SDL from that and they need to insert it into your timeline. You can just use another timeline, make a track, stereo, put the SDL in there and then multi-paste that onto your timeline and it doesn't have any conflict with anything else, that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of changes being done to make to, uh, to support tracks. Uh, but yeah, this is, hopefully this is, gives you some indication that we're sort of f finally starting to solve some of the problems with the baseline timeline that people have, have long had. Mm -hmm.